There's no such thing as being shadow banned, and J.O. is here to prove it in this conversation, breaking down how he took artists who couldn't get a thousand views on their content to getting millions of views just like that. Now, that's just a little bit of it because J.O. breaks down one small thing that you can do to brand yourself in a way that people won't forget. And I promise you've never heard this trick before. He breaks down a management deal he had as an artist that lost him tens of thousands of dollars. The ups and downs, the legitimate experience from an artist who's in it and going viral many times over. If you're an artist or manager and you plan to really be in this music thing and you don't check out this full conversation with J.O. now, you regret it later. I can promise you that. What's up, what's up, what's up, I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us wherever you listen or watch videos, stream podcasts, here at the intersection of creative and currency. And boy, we got a story for y'all today. Someone who has went from school teacher to content creator, Artists extraordinaire <laughs> popping, blowing other artists up. It's it, it's the whole shebang. Jo, who is here with us today, has lived an interesting life, and I think y'all will be able to get a lot. But the subject number one, matter of fact, uh, I want to start off with before I even let you talk, Jo. <laughs> Jo says, "Ain't no such thing as being shadow banned, man." <laughs> And he has an answer for y'all of what's really going on. And he's actually going to prove it to you and speak about how he's helped break some other artists as an artist as well. Talk to him, man. Hey, ain't no such thing as being shadow banned. Your content's just ass. All right. So uh, this is something I got to tell myself. Um, I have to remind myself because there's eras where, you know, like my content and my views are going down. And I think I heard Mr. Beast even say like a quote, he's like, replace the word algorithm with audience. And mm -hmm. that's how you're going to like frame your mindset when you're making content. So yeah, I was, uh, I've worked with other artists that can't seem to crack the code or figure out what's going on on TikTok or Instagram or whatever it is with content. Cause usually when a video does well, it does well on multiple platforms, but sometimes there's cases where it only does well on one platform, but um, which both are a sign of something, you know, like, like there are different audiences on each platform, but yeah, a good video will take off somewhere. So definitely post everywhere. But uh, yeah, I've seen I've seen artists that can't crack a thousand views and or can't, you know, get anything to pop and just doing the right type of video. We've been able to hit a mill or more. So wait, yeah. so you, you say that so, so quickly, but I think we need to like really settle on that and then we get into the how of that as well. You said, hey, these artists can't crack a thousand views. And then I take them under my bosom. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're doing a million plus views. <laughs> right? What exactly is happening? Like, there's this one concept, you know, you sent me with, uh, what, what's her name? Amy Vaughn or Carissa Bone? Yeah, like, that's the one I did recently. Most recently, Amy Vaughn. Shout out Amy and uh, Nash. Nash is a co-artist on that song, and he's a he's a big artist. Um, so, yeah, they, they hit me up. They hit me up first with ideas, um, and I just gave him some ideas back, like, you know, as a homie. And came back and was like, yo, can you actually like take over this campaign? And I noticed like just going through her page, like she couldn't really like crack a thousand, not, definitely not consistently. And it, everything felt kind of addy. And I, I try to remind people like when you are advertising your music, it's kind of like selling a shirt. Like if every single video is about this shirt, people aren't going to listen. And you're kind of losing your core audience in the first two seconds because that's all you really have. Because the second they see your video, it's like, oh, he's selling me something again. Like you have to give. Like you have to give entertainment, you have to give something of value, um, whether it's educationally or edu or entertainment wise. So that was like just the first thing I was noticing. Everything was just an ad. It was like she's trying to perform a song and this is this. Same thing with most artists that I see. It's like they're just trying to force and shove their song down people's throats. It's not going to work. Like sometimes that's not what the first thing people want to see from you. And you got to build that rapport with an audience where you're giving, giving, giving. And then it's like, hey, I want to, you know. Now that you've been watching and receiving or receiving from me, can you can you check out the song, you know, type thing? Um, but that being said, I got hired for a campaign. It's not like a long route. I didn't have time to just build her audience and like uh let's just do non-music related stuff yet. So it was like the song's coming out, let's promote this song. So uh yeah, there's there's formats out there that are are usually trending. So you can really like 
find and see what's what you see on your for you page as you're exploring like you know when you see these music artists promoting what's working and why is it working and if you can't break down why it's working then that's when like you kind of need to really get that like radar and really analyze videos you know to be like okay what's happening in the first two seconds who who is their target audience who are the people that are sharing this because why does it have so many shares who are they sharing it with like what what is the feeling that this is giving people and answering those type of questions is going to get your framework around like what went behind that video and what you could put behind your video to make it different because you don't want to steal you want to like be inspired by art so uh, I think that was just what it was coming down to this video. So, yeah. It's interesting you say that because, mm -hmm. yes, there's formats out there, right? But, you know, we, I feel like it's different today where before there was so much on TikTok, especially just ripping the format and iterating the format and everybody was, it would be, everybody was doing it at the same time. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot less of like these massive things that are all working right now and trending and more mm -hmm. so there might be one thing individually and there's a couple other people that'll take that thing and then there's another other other another thing that's working and then there might be four or five people that take that thing and i and i like it that way because it's more selective right this this one for example i'll tell you me and Corey, like both thought when we saw this campaign we were thinking about johnny two phones and ours we worked yeah. with and because you had the sign and we've yeah. seen multiple artists do something with the sign since he was popping with it last year but it's not like we've seen all the artists do it right and arguably yeah, uh, what you're doing is nothing like his in its own way so i would love to hear how you how you thought about that and if that was your reference point too yeah i love johnny um definitely like i've tried to do johnny demon style video and like you know try to make it i tried to do my own spin for my own page because like i was trying to do it where uh i had people dance but like when they put on the headphones it's like there's a sniper on the roof for you. You better dance to survive type thing. So I try to do like, I always try to make it a comedic twist because I grew my audience off comedy. So I'm still in my way where I'm trying to convert people. I've been doing that for the last couple of years. So um, that was my own spin on it. It didn't do crazy good. It did better on YouTube, but that's, that's what I was saying. Like sometimes videos do better on different platforms. Um, but as far as like the style that we were doing with Amy, uh, first person I think I saw do it was John Michael. Uh, he's a TikTok artist that uh, really kills it. And then recently, High Forest, um, mm -hmm. that's his app, but his artist name is Forest. He's done it and it blew up like multiple times on IG, literally to a T. And it's funny because um, the editor that I have helping me on this edit, um, which I could edit it, but it's more so just my time <laughs> that I have. And it's really hard to find editors that could edit the style that I'm thinking of. The editor that I know actually did John Michaels. <laughs> so yeah, and funny enough, he's actually the person in the original video. So it just worked out that I like I know him. We just shot a few music videos. I was like, yo, let's work it out. Let's let's do some of these videos. So he knew the format already. And it eased my mind because like they say the easiest way to, you know, be successful as a business is duplicating yourself. And this has been the best aspect where I really feel like I could duplicate myself in Ross. That's his name. Uh, so, yeah, like getting the people that know how, like, you know, in the first two seconds of making a cut. The wording, having the words be big, legible, um, the zoom cuts, and really just the ADHD type editing. Hold, hold in up, hold up, man! You, 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 you're, you're zooming through this stuff because this is like how you think normally. My bad, yeah. But yeah, I want yeah. you to like, since you are touching on this, yeah, can you yeah. like break it down as if you were like teaching us? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. what are the things in the video? Because you've been going viral for a long time now. Like, yeah. how, how do you do this? Yeah, um, there's definitely like things like. So first two questions I always ask myself, it's like, um, one, if someone random was watching this, would they share this video? And two, who would they share it with? So definitely you want to have a target audience when you think of an idea. Uh, so for example, Amy's, uh, the sign is like what we were trying to figure out. The longest thing to brainstorm was what the sign was going to say, even though it seems so simple. But the longest thing we had to brainstorm was what the sign was going to say, because it needed to relate to an audience. And that's what's going to hook people in. That relate and that sign saying sit here if you're in a situation ship is a great hook because it's like it's not everybody but it's relatable enough to where a large majority of people either have been or are in one currently to stay and sit and be there mind you um so i'm mainly just talking about the content process and then i'll talk about like little hacks i don't really think like hacks alone can make you viral a lot of people like to focus on the hacks, like, oh, what hashtag to use, what this to use, and this is that. And it's like, that's not what's going to make you viral. That can help, like, your SEO and getting your video found later 
and can help like propel your video to the right audience in the beginning. But that alone won't make you viral. A viral video comes from the content side. So I'm going to talk about the content and then I'll bring over the hacks. So content side, um, yeah, you want to be able to think of like, what's your target audience when you're making a video and, uh, and, and, and to communicate with that. So that being said, in the content itself too, you want to be dynamic and cater to ADHD because not a lot of people, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> not a, you're like, I'm not tripping. I'm not, <laughs> not a lot of people can, um, <laughs> not, wow, ADHD is crazy. Um, I think it helps that I have ADHD when I'm editing because I'm like, what do I get bored at? And that's a really important thing to do when you're editing is ask yourself, where do you get bored? It's a lot of people's shots just offer it. Like, like hold up, hold up, but because you got to continue with the train of thought that you were on. But for those yeah. who are just listening on the podcast, Jail's talking and fireworks just erupted behind him. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what Zoom is doing right now. I've never seen this, but it was it's it's crazy. He looked rather it's magical. Uh, OS seven, whatever iOS we on, they have like some things. I talk with my hands, and some hand gestures trigger different. Um, animations in the background. So I was triggering thumbs ups and fireworks. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, <laughs> and my ADHD has gone all over the place, but I'm trying to remember where I was at. I was talking about um, the content side and making good content before worrying about the hacks. So yeah, definitely with like the good content, you want to have a target audience. And like, um, for example, I honestly, like even if we did a game where you pulled up a viral video, I could tell you why it went viral. Like that's that's the point that I'm at. Like, like, like that's the easier route to like show people. It's like, cause people think it's all accidental. And especially if it goes viral multiple times, it's not accidental. And don't chase the exception to the rule, chase like the rule. Like people will look at videos and be like, oh, this went viral though. And it's like, that's the exception. Maybe there's one video out of 200,000 <laughs> or one video out of 200 that are like, this doesn't really have a meaning and it took off. And it's like, are you going to chase the exception to the rule? Or are you going to chase the rule? Like this is going to get you more results and get you an audience versus trying to chase this one exception of, of crazy artistic, uh, uh, you know, chance. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's how it is with that. So um, yeah, with targeting audience, we asked, uh, are you in a, uh, to hear if you're in a situation ship? And that, that is an audience of people that we wanted to target because the song was solving that issue. This, this is specifically for that format of the video. In the video, someone comes sit down and she asks them about the situation ship and tells the woman to call her situation ship guy. As she calls the guy, uh, she plays a song to them that says, do you love me? Do you love me or not? And um, essentially we are solving and remedying this like situation ship with the song. So that's like the format that came from John Michael. He said, if you're having a bad day, sit here. And he plays a song about having a good day. Same thing with uh, High high Forest. It's like you're solving the issue with the song and it makes people feel good. Thus, people uh, share the video and stuff. And you don't want to drag out the ending too long. So in the content side of things, beginning, hooking people in is important. Giving people the substance and then not dragging out the outro like you kind of want to tail it off right at the climax, if not barely after. And that way people will feel like they want to watch it again, because if that's what they get, like they want to watch this again or share it with somebody else to give them that same feeling. That's when you have a successful video, because when the shares go up, most likely it's going viral. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's one aspect of the viral part. And then on the other side, there's the little hacks and things to think about, like always using a new feature is very important. Like Instagram right now has polls. Use that, drive it up. Like <laughs> always use that. Like that's what we did on this video. Also, I was like, Hey, like, cause she wasn't crossing a thousand views. Like I said, this is a new feature. Let's use it. Let's ask people, are you in a situation ship and give the option of like, yes and no, or maybe. And like that poll had over, I think over a thousand. I don't even know how many people saw, like answered the question, but like, People that don't want to comment are answering the poll, which is going to drive the engagement up on the video on IG. Um, so wait till TikTok gets that. Be sure it's going to be kind of crazy, too. So uh, new features is always an important thing. Also, like you want to trick the apps to thinking that you edit it in the app sometimes. So like sometimes I'll say like type a word or you could use words or like a period and drag it to the corner, you know, somewhere hidden. And like that way, the app thinks that you edit an app. I don't know if it's proven yet uh, fully that that's true. 
that more detail because I haven't heard that before. Yeah, so that one, um, there's two sides of that. So like some people just like want the app to think that it's um it's that you're editing in there. So for instance, like I I put my titles per app. So like let's say I edit a video on CapCut. When I take it to TikTok, I might do the title there and I might do the title on IG. If I don't do that and I have the title from CapCut also there, I might type like a period or I can type some SEO words relating to the video. Like uh, sometimes I'll put similar artists like Nick D, Ty Verdes, this and that, like stuff that I like to me, and ease. And then I'll hit hide it in the corner so that way the video is registering those keywords um, because I typed it within the app itself and it thinks that I edited the video in TikTok. Or I so you're not talking about IG. the caption, you're talking about like literally on the video and it's just like small in the corner of the screen. It's like Nobody's not, not even notice. visible, super, super small. I hide it like kind of off the corner. Yeah. And I know a lot of content creators that do this. Oh, yeah. That's like old school SEO type stuff. Yeah it'll, be, yeah, yeah. it'll be like between two paragraphs, there's actually a, a all white text paragraph that nobody knows is on the page because you're trying exactly. to use the keywords. Yeah. That, yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah. So you you kind of do that with content. That's another hack. Like, And once again, hacks alone won't get you viral, but like making good videos and then adding these hacks give you the most probability for virality. Because virality still does have an element of chance, but like there's people that do it very consistently because they always provide the most, uh, like you know, the the thing that's going to give the most chance for virality. And yeah, there's more of those. Like like I said, cutting, making sure there's a cut or a switch up in the first two seconds is a good one. Um, and then uh, adding topics on IG is a good one. Hashtags, like yeah, maybe like three. I honestly like a hashtag is more SEO for me. It's not like that's definitely not what's going to make you viral. And I wish people knew that because that's always the first question I get when people ask me like, yo, what, what hashtags should I be using? It's like, that's not what your focus should be on. It's damn near the last thing I care about. <laughs> but yeah, so those things are off the top of the dome, some hacks and some things that I, I like to think about when I'm doing content. I want to drop a quick note for anybody who has a fan problem and not just any old fan problem, but the type of fan problem that we encountered after helping a lot of artists go viral, have a lot of success, get a lot of streams, but still not being able to know who exactly are my fans? How do I reach them? How do I actually leverage that to sell merch, go to a show? Because that's where Spotify leaves us without knowing who our real people are. Same for social media. If you've had this problem, I'll tell you how we've been solving it at our agency for a while now. And the pro version is just now being released to be accessible to any artist or manager out there. I'm talking about Forever Fan. A lot of the campaigns and successes that y'all have heard us talk about on this channel have been powered by that software that's made finding and understanding your true fan simple so they support you with their pockets. Because we all need a little money in this music thing. And now they're making it available to our audience for only $1 at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, no labels with an S at the end. And you got to put in the code, no labels. All right. Now, look, the DSPs, the social media platforms, I think they've shown us how much they care about artists for a while now. So at this point, we can all play naive or actually do something about it. Bet on yourself at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels. And again, put in the code, no labels, to get initial access for only $1. Let's get back to this episode. Yeah, so so you said something earlier I thought was interesting, right? You said the, the Mr. Beast quote of replace algorithm with audience, and that typically what is what your issue is. And Sean and I have said this for a couple of years where, you know, we would tell people like, hey, the algorithm is really a reflection of the platform's audience mood change towards something, right? So like the example that comes up a lot is dance videos. And people are like, oh, like dance videos fell off. And it's like, well, they didn't just fall, fall off out of nowhere. TikTok as a whole just kind of got like sick of dance videos and the algorithm started to reflect that. So yeah. that makes me wonder, you know, for someone like you, how much of your content creation process is just you pulling, you know, unique ideas from your own brain versus you literally just reacting to like maybe what your audience is telling you they like or they want to see from you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I must answer this in a way for like newbies as well as people that have been creating for a while. It's like you have to have to have to be constantly taking notes of like your ideas because you you naturally as a creative person. 
um, which all of us are. We are creators, you know, <laughs> made in the image of the creator. We are creators. We're all creators. So like we all come up with ideas and people just don't jot it down. Like we are forgetful people. And if you're just writing ideas down, like I have a long note list shared with one of my friends that like is super long. And I have another long note list with another friend. And then I have a song idea list and I have all these lists on my phone. So it's like constantly like those are my innovative ideas. And then on top of that, like I'm on IG or TikTok. And as I'm seeing ideas that might inspire me, I'm saving them in certain categories. Wasn't doing that before. I used to just save it in my DMs. That was like a whole funny thing too, because my friend would hate me. So I'll save it by DMing it to a certain friend. He's like, why do you keep sending me this? And I'm like, I want to react to this later or I want to come back to this. But now I'm like, okay, I'm actually bookmarking it and putting it in albums. And like, this is things that you want to do because like, when, as long as you keep seeing these trends and keep seeing these things, it's going to inspire ideas. And then you can put your voice in it. Like, you know, I did that video where uh, it was like, uh, we're, we're black artists and da, 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 da. And that was like one of my recent ones that, that blew up. And it, it's, it's a common trend though. We're this, we're this. And, um, yeah, you know, I've seen a few of them. I even in doing that, like it was one of the other artists, Jalen and Sean, shout out and, uh, Zach, uh, Paradise. We, Jalen came up with the idea and I was like, I've seen people do black artists. So I said, if we do this, I want to do it in a different way. And we do have like Zach in there. So I was like, they were like, oh. This also goes to the hack thing, like, oh, let's put Zach third since it's like, and I'm like, no, you have two seconds to hook someone. If you're going to do this, Zach needs to be second. Like, <laughs> you know, like the white boy needs to be second. Let's go. First one, we have to say a fire bar that's relatable. So that way we draw people in. So Jalen says, uh, we're black artists. Of course, he assume I rap. And it's like, okay, that's relatable. That's hooking. And then immediately you see this white boy that's just like staring <laughs> and like that alone was our hook we knew we had people for like at least another 10 15 seconds so as long as we kept them entertained and then at the end of this thing we did a song promo um so yeah that 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 even slow burned and took off on both platforms over a mil if not two mil on both platforms so uh and even ig or youtube is taking off a little bit so yeah that's like the mindset it's like okay we target an audience and then it's still funny enough to hit like an overall audience, but like the main target audience is like people that listen or, or know black artists. Like we even mentioned some things like we got our chops from the church. We, uh, you know, like amen brother, like there's like black jokes in there that like we knew our audience there, but then we also knew like the overall people would kind of like laugh at it in general. So yeah, mm -hmm. I kind of like answer multiple questions in one, but I hope that can. <laughs> you did, you did. And I actually want to get to some of the, specifics around your particular artist's career. Um, but yeah. before we get there, you said something interesting, and I, and I think it goes down to so many levels. I don't think most artists need to get this scientific, but going back to the 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 top, we'll start from the top. Mr. B says, not the algorithm, it's the audience, right? Well, which means if it's the audience, you have two versions of that. One, the audience is gonna tell you if it's dope, but also you have to make sure it's being seen by the right audience in the first place, all right? And there's different ways to do that. Things like hashtags do help with that over time. Just think all the little things that help with the SEO are also helping the algorithm understand who's relevant to this, which is why we shouldn't do like random hashtags. We're not in that era. Please, please stop doing random hashtags. It's only hurting you, literally, all right? So, all right, you gotta get seen by the right audience if there is an audience, all right, because you don't. You could just be getting negative feedback. You could be B.O.B. playing a guitar in a you know trap club in the middle of Atlanta. Of course, you're getting booed. You know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah. You, you find the right audience, and then once you have the right audience, the video itself has an audience of its own. Where you said that that video specifically was for black artists, black people, right? That's not all your videos, right? You, you have right. your your videos hit a very diverse set of people. But that one, that core audience, right, would have to yeah. understand that. And that kind of guided the rest of the video, the jokes that you included, yeah. the like pattern interrupt with bringing the white boy in that one. And yeah. so it's, it's really interesting, right? Where it's not just like who likes my stuff, right? But yeah. who am I resonating with in this particular video? No different than how the situation ship video, right, kind of. Yeah kind of touched on some things. That's where you took my mind as you spoke. And um, you touched, can you speak on a couple of those artists that you've helped beyond, we just went through the one girl, 
Yeah, uh, but yeah, I did. Uh, I was more. helping out Bryce Vine as well um, recently. Uh, helped him, and then I did a video with Kyle as well. But uh, Bryce's campaign was interesting, like because uh, yeah, we we met each other at a bar, and uh, it was funny because uh, when I was vibing with him, I didn't realize he was Bryce Vine, and uh, some people don't even like you know recognize his name. Some people know his name, and the people that know his name, like me, sometimes don't know his face, and that was the case for me. Like I didn't even know he was Bryce Vine until. the end when we were leaving he's like yo grab my ig he said bryce i was like you're, you're bryce like what <laughs> like i bro i used to listen to you in 2016 you're on my uber playlist and then uh he hit me up later like hey i'm trying to do some content and and he's like I, I like your music like i'll help you out with music if you help me out with like content so i was like word and first thing i have to say because like a lot of artists have like ego i have to let him know like hey honestly i don't think a lot of people know your face like you know like i have to let them know that and like it's been a, a current a common thing with some other artists i also talk with where it's like i have to oop, i have to talk about um oops sorry about that i have to like discuss the fact that like hey some people might not know you like you think they know you and let's play on that let's let's do interviews with the public and find out so that's what we do with bryce i i grabbed the mic grabbed the camera took him out to Hollywood Boulevard and say, we're going to play like your two big songs with people recognize some people. And we're going to ask them who sang the song. And it was just a fun game. We'll ask people and, you know, it kind of revealed something to him because he probably thought people automatically knew like it's Bryce Vine, but people are like, you know, Drake, P. Diddy, uh, <laughs> Kid Cudi. Like, you know, people are saying all these like crazy names. And they're like, oh yeah, I've heard this. And then the funniest part was when in one of the videos, this guy's like, oh, that's Bryce Vine. <laughs> but he doesn't realize it's Bryce <laughs> like that's asking him this question so then I behind the camera I'm like yo like can you describe what he looks like and you can hear my voice say that and he's like ah oh, yeah no I couldn't tell you <laughs> and then Bryce like uh shows him a second song and he's like oh that's also Bryce Vine <laughs> so this video is just like a great moment where it's like people didn't recognize him but uh Yeah, I mean, his fans liked it. And then it also took off. Uh, that video has almost a million plays on uh, TikTok. And uh, yeah, it's just it's one of those videos where it's like, hey, now I, you can attach the face to the song. Because that's there's two sides of that goes into like music marketing in general. Like even with Amy Al song, you're like, there's two sides of this. There's like when you're marketing a song, there's the aspect of getting the song viral where it's like you're getting people using the song. And there's the aspect of attaching your your name to the song and attaching you as an artist to the song. And those are two different campaigns. And sometimes people get lucky and it happens at the same time. Uh, a good friend I could think of, Paul Russell. I feel like most people know what he looks like. But like at the same time, there's probably a lot of people that don't because the song has superseded him. <laughs> that song has gone to the freaking moon. <laughs> and like, but the, like the original videos where he was like, you know, jamming and circling, people saw his face and like it, was, it got to be attached. I can name a hundred, like a bunch of songs that people couldn't tell you what the people look like. That went viral on TikTok. Um, so yeah, it's if that's the case, then you have to do some videos that are now showing your face and tying you to the song in a way. Yeah, we, we actually just uh saw this post about Cookie Kawa talking about mm -hmm. that, right? She was talking about how, you know, a lot of people artistically give her credit for kind of setting off this new wave of like bounce music and the, the kind of club music, but the song was so much bigger than her that like she didn't have time to like get her face card to catch up to it. And now, you know, we're yeah. retroactively looking back like, damn, like that should have been you, you know what I'm saying, kind of as the face of the scene. But mm -hmm. yeah, you're right, it was a lot of TikTok artists at the time where I think because of how the platform was, it's just, it moved them, it moved the song at probably like a hundred X speed compared to where their yeah. resources could, could take them. And we're starting to see a lot of them kind of go through like, the backlash of that, you know, so the downside of that. Yeah. And I mean, I to 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 continue on that, I actually quote Bradman Sean all the time. <laughs> I quote you from one of your videos in 2018 that I saw that was uh talking about uh branding and saying uh if your brand isn't as as strong like if you can't be made a Halloween costume, your brand isn't strong enough. Uh that's a huge that's a huge part of like connecting yourself to Thank you for that credit by the way, because that that girl uh stole my my concept. I meant oh, to yeah, like yeah. do something petty because she, she went super yeah, viral. Yeah. I just thought I of this concept. Of someone saying that. <laughs> just stole my concept. Like, this sounds like you. <laughs> but yeah, Ice Spice is a great example of that. The song was super seen, but it was like she it can be made a Halloween costume. People could dress as her. 
uh, Khalid, Billy Eilish, Post Malone, like all these people, like you can really like dress as Michael Jackson. It goes on like these are icons and that's what separated them. And even just having something little that kind of like makes people recognize you, uh, whether it's sonically or physically or, or both, which is what great artists do. They have it on both sides. Like sonically, you can kind of sound like Ice Spice, but you can also look like Ice Spice. And if, when you have that, that's when it's easier for you to to not get buried or lost behind your song. So yeah, actually that's, I was talking with Amy about that too. I actually looked at her top two videos and I was like, you know, your top two videos, you have braids there. It's like, she has the bicolored hair where it's like one half blonde, one half brunette, mm -hmm. but she was rocking it down recently. And I was like, your top two videos, you have braids in it. And like, even for me in 2021, when I analyzed my top 10 videos, I had my Afro, even though I wear, I, I used to wear hats a lot. I was like, all right, well, if my Afro is what's going more viral, I need to like rock my Afro more. <laughs> like meaning I got to do, do my hair more. So I was like with Amy, like you got to braid your hair next time we do the shoot. Like, yeah, the first one we did it without, but I was like, you have to braid it. Like it's going to just do better. And even just even off video, like the compliments of the people around her that just came while we were shooting was like 10 times more people just coming up. <laughs> I was like, The world is telling you something. The world is telling people you kept something. walking yeah. up and saying like, oh, are you, you're a hot girl. Like this, <laughs> this one guy specifically was just like, are, are, are you guys shooting a TikTok? You should be the hot girl in the TikTok. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> that's a wild like pickup line is that what y'all doing out here LA shit, man. <laughs> LA. <laughs> Venice Beach, like it was just go on with yourself man <laughs> oh I, i'm glad you actually mentioned that though because you know i used to talk about this more heavily and sometimes it's just hard to repeat yourself when you feel like you put the youtube video out there or whatever but like a lot a, you have a lot of things that are done intentionally when it comes to brand but Sometimes it's just, hey, I happen to go viral in this moment, or I I happen to get a lot of attention in this moment, and for a second you have to be frozen in time and lean into that moment. That means, oh, I was wearing a hoodie. Well, I have to wear that hoodie a little bit more while they still associate me with that look, right? Because I see yeah. you in that hoodie, or it's like, wait, wait, are you Jo? I didn't know you were Jo until I heard you say you were Jo. And then you took your glasses off. It's like, oh, you are J.O. Or you put your glasses on. It's like, oh, you are J.O., right? Because like they, they're used to seeing you in a specific way. You have to get give people time to recognize you in different iterations, you know? Yeah, it's like Superman and Clark Kent. Like, there's a reason why they couldn't tell who he was. <laughs> That's what R. Kelly thought he was doing in that video, with saying that wasn't him when he had the mask on. I was like, bruh, uh... <laughs> I, <laughs> we know you a little bit too well, bro. That mask ain't hiding. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm fortunate. <laughs> but, it, but it is crazy, though. It's like you have to just be aware because I don't think that Ice Spice would have leaned into the Afro as heavily, right? Because that's not her natural hair. A lot of people didn't even realize that. So then when, when they started seeing her without it, they were like, oh, whoa, I didn't know. And now for me, still, you know, and like I'm not like her primary demographic, but it's like it don't hit the same. She don't look like Ice Spice for me yet unless she got the Ice Spice look. You know what I mean? So yeah. you got to, it, it's kind of just is what it is and, and being aware. I, I've never heard anybody reference it that way though. Like looking at the videos and how you looked as a whole. I, I kind of done that. I, well, we've done that. Like when we're analyzing an influencer and what are we going to use them for? What are they doing in the video? But just talking about is my hair braided or not? My, do I have an afro or not? Like those specifics. It's like you are developing a look at the moment, you know? Well, yeah, it was like, it it, it was a Halloween costume look. That was like, you can literally, she had a beanie and like her and her braids, like one, two, two braids, one blonde, one brown. I'm like, you can literally make this a wig. Like this could literally, so I'm like, this, it, it, it makes sense already as a brand. Why deviate and try to force something else? This already worked twice, your top two videos which or were her top two videos now <laughs> the new video we did is not her top video but like i'm like let's let's emphasize this let's let's use this more so like all the new ones that we shot that are coming out soon are all with like her braids and she's gonna pretty much rock that mostly for the, moving forward <laughs> but yeah you made me think about something too that I, I just would love to get your thoughts on right like so if we think about tiktok and his um let's say current iteration versus when it first popped i feel like Early TikTok artists could get away without having a super established brand because a lot of times it was like other trends or 
it was somebody else's idea carrying the song like nine and a half times out of ten versus today TikTok, a lot of the more viral videos like actually include the artists in it, right? Or include like them like let's say out of ten, like at least like seven or eight of them are probably them like performing somewhere or doing something. So it feels like this new batch of artists and, and content creators using those platforms have to kind of care more about the brand and the look than let's say like the 2019 artists that were that were taking advantage of, of, of TikTok. One, um, you know, just w- what are your thoughts on that in general? Have you noticed something one way or the other? And then two, um, what advice would you give for to the artists that are operating in like the new the new TikTok? Yeah, I feel like um, that might just be a case of that being the gap of early TikTok because it's like artists had to care about their brand before and now they have to care about it again. It's like maybe that was just like that two year span where because it was so early on TikTok that it didn't matter if a song blowing up was a song blowing up. But then you look at it and it's like there still were iconic people blowing up in those times, you know, like uh, Lil Nas X. Uh, uh, I'm thinking like uh, who else was early? Well, like, yeah, I could even. Oh, 24K Golden. Like, you know, like he kind of had a look like and and, you know, like I, I, I can register the look of his braids and so on, like with that. But, yeah, there's definitely people that blew up without it. Um, and I think like it's just getting back to that because one, the market's getting oversaturated on TikTok again. So you just have to stand out in a way. Um, even when I think of like artists like D4, David, he has a band aid, like, something as simple as that. And like um, just like being associated with something. And even if it's like glasses or like just the, if the way you look at itself is unique, like that also works. Like, you know, like that, like it's just, um, I don't know that the, the audience kind of tells you what they like and you can kind of see that out. And um, I think like for new artists, just like, yeah, you don't want to do something that's unnatural to you. Like, yeah, I have like bright colors sometimes and like my background colors, but most of my stuff is neutral. Like I, my, most of my closet is like earth tones and neutral. Even when I'm making merch, I'm like trying to do earth tones and neutral with like a splash of color. Like you want to still be natural, but like find what is that edge that you can do um that makes you like even when you think Kanye like he has a look he has a thing that makes it like oh this looks like Kanye even if you saw no Yeezy logo you'd be like this looks like Yeezy like I think like thinking like that like what makes you you as an artist and what um and how do you want like how do you want to inspire people in that like as an artist being you know like your physical look is part of your artistry like that is art like and I think that's that's that might tie the, the the connect the dots right there. The only thing I'll come back that you said, I don't think the yeah. audience always tells you what they like, sure. but I think they will always sure. tell you what's interesting to them for better or worse. Yeah. Right. Like yes. there's something being yeah. said, there's always going to be feedback about that thing. That's interesting, whether it is yeah. negative or positive. And you, you mentioned Kanye. I think he's somebody who's probably done the best job since Michael Jackson, when it comes to just branding, where you can see multiple things, right? And associate it with a Kanye. There's like a Yeezy shoe silhouette. There's like a couple of Yeezy shoe silhouettes that you can associate with him. There's an overall style of dress now that you kind of attribute to him. Uh, you see somebody with a, a mask, you know, you will you can associate it with him. He has a couple of things, man. You know, and then you go to Michael Jackson, like oh, up moonwalk that's michael jackson you kick your legs yeah. up that's michael jackson you grab your balls yeah. and put them in the air that's michael jackson you, you got your hand regular it's michael jackson. jackson regular like it's so many things you know what i mean and and i don't think people realize like although there's a, a lot of superstar artists there's very few that have branded things so strongly in that way mm-hmm. all right like i was telling jacory the other day i was with my daughter like we were making pancakes and it just so happened like you know, she made the main circle and then I like, made like two more circles Well, I ended up making the two more circles. And she instantly just said Mickey Mouse, just seeing yep. three circles. Like I was like, the, the how powerful that shit is. Right. Yep. Like like to have just three circles and you instantly yeah. think Mickey, Mickey Mouse and nobody else can yeah. take that. Right. You now got the real estate. Your mouse don't even look like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, just like the heart doesn't look like the heart that we use. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, right? facts, yeah. But that's how powerful branding and just hey, if you can get everybody to agree on it, right? Up oh, there we go. And this is what we this is what we mean when we use that, right? That's how words work, right? We all mean this when we say that. So like I think I think that's what's so intriguing about the idea of branding and what I can kind of like personally like nerd out about where people, you know, a lot of people look at it more of the commercial capitalist st- standpoint, but just like when you think about how crazy it is when it really works, it's actually fascinating. But uh, before we talk, I want to talk about some management advice and, and situations you've been through. But before we get there, because you got an interesting story, bro, on that side of things. <laughs> you've made, I'm sure there's other artists do this, but the way you talk about bartering and leveraging your platform is like nothing I really hear artists talk about. Um you know, yeah, I don't really hear artists talk about that much. Look, so can you can you, do you mind sharing that? Yeah, I mean, um, there's a lot of people that have like skills in something else. Like, like we're all not just like. I hope you're not just solely good at just music. I mean, if you are, that's still like great. Like, kill it, be to the moon. But there's a lot of people that are jack of all trades, or at least jack of three trades, or a couple things. And for me, I feel like I'm really strong in content creation, comedy, uh, music. I can name a bunch, but like in the creative space that like, what can I serve others with? And I think that's like, honestly, like the first question you should ask yourself when networking, like, how can I help others? You know, how can I help you? Because it's the first thing you do when you meet someone, especially if you're not in LA and you're about to come to LA, like that's the first thing that people hate. Like if you come here and the first thing you're doing is asking for something, or my first DM is you asking for something like that is not going to like help you there's like (laughs) mainly because the people that are at the top have been asked that by thousands of people already so it's like if you don't find a way for you to be of service to them well then one just don't hit them up yet and maybe you figure out how you can or you maybe you can even asking for help is different but like asking for like a bone is completely like just don't do that so for me when i'm networking either like i I think about like uh, big artists like pink sweats who have opened my dms before like in 2019 before i was even anything and like i was just genuinely asking for advice like i was like hey i'm really like inspired by your art and da 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 you know so first off giving (laughs) you know giving like compliment giving like making sure he knows like i i am inspired by his stuff and i asked for like you know any advice and stuff and then later he gave me some feedback on some songs that i think is one route and then the other route is like yeah, I hit up people. And I'm like, hey, I can do content, or like, I like, I noticed like you might need some help with like some editing or this and that. I would love to link up and discuss like some ideas, or I might even just send ideas sometimes without even saying like linking up. Like, I'll just be like, hey, I noticed this is this. Like, I think if you do this, it, it might help. Just you know, unsolicited advice, but if you want it, or sometimes I might even ask beforehand, like, hey, if you want some advice, I can give it to you. It does help that like I have been kind of like certified in the field <laughs> and like I have a rep- repertoire of like me being successful at content. So then people take my advice more. But I feel like finding a space for that, especially if like you can kind of find holes that like what artists need. So I think that's where uh, I've been able to take advantage is just like talking to some artists that like have found success in music, but haven't found success in content I can offer and barter and trade with with that so <laughs> what what about flipping to yeah. be on tour with kyle or other people like that yeah uh so yeah so uh with bryce for instance like uh I, I said like he he actually brought it up first because i was mainly just offering help and i didn't even bring up music he said i want to check out your music because he saw my page <laughs> and i was just offering him content help and he was just like yeah i want to check out your music i like it man like um like I'll I'll help you in music if you want to help me in content, and that's what happened. So I helped him with stuff, and then he put me on tour. He let me open four locations. Uh, we've been in the studio many times. I we were, he released a song called Margot Robbie that I co-wrote, and uh, I also promoted and have point on the masters that A and R the whole song, and then uh, we've written some others. I'm working on his album right now, so stuff like that's happened. And then with Bright uh, with Kyle, um, I knew his videographer for like a couple of years. He was following me. And uh, I bought a ticket, like, you know, like sometimes you got to do things like I bought a, a VIP ticket just so I can have an opportunity to talk to him because like he was an artist that I, I was really a fan of. And yeah, I bought a VIP ticket and I told the videographer I was going to be there and he was like, oh, that Kyle wants to do some content. Like, if you have any ideas, let me know. I was like, oh, I do have an idea. You know, <laughs> I was like, matter of fact. Best believe I had an idea before I bought this hundred dollar ticket. <laughs> and then, and then uh, when I pulled up. 
And I told him like, hey, I want to do a video where um, I challenge you in Mario Kart because I did my research. I saw he loves Mario Kart, Mario, uh, Super Smash Bros. and so on. I mean, he has a song about, you know, Super Smash Bros. But anyway, <laughs> I I brought Mario Kart, brought my Switch, all that. We played. Um, and I said, if I if I lose, I'll buy five pieces of merch. If he wins, or if I win, I get to open on any location of your choice on tour. So that way it's in, you know, easy, low stakes. You can let me op open in buff fuck nowhere if you want, you know? So, um, yeah, that video went well. And he was just like, yeah, I'll let you open regardless. He told me that before we even did the video. And, um, yeah, I actually lost, which was crazy because I was winning the whole game. I was literally, like, in front of him the whole game. Got hit by two red shells and a blue shell out of nowhere. I was I was winning the first two laps. Like, it was literally ridiculous. And the video was great for it because my reaction was genuine. I was screaming like, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I lost. And then, um, yeah, we, I ended up opening anyway. I bought six pieces of merch. I, I held my end of the deal. Um, and yeah, so that was a fun experience too. So I think there's like, yeah, being, being fun, being, um, someone that people want to be around that isn't just asking for stuff is always like a great way to network and just like end up getting what you want because like you got to play the long game like i'm just like how can i provide for people how can i be of service because everybody else around them is trying to take from them so that's just my mentality what are your thoughts on managers in general ah uh, man um definitely it's really hard to find a manager that that rides like 100 percent believes in you but also 100 percent is a hustler. I, I guess like personality types definitely do matter matter because I'm also like sliding in even assistance in that thought process. But uh just from my experiences with my own managers as well as people what I've seen, it's like you want to find some a manager that that rides like that actually believes in your art and you and you succeeding um and isn't just trying to get a, a dollar or nothing and those are always the best, but then it's also better when they are connected and have experience doing it. Like a new manager is harder. I don't have experience fully with like a new, new manager. Most of my managers in my past have been like somewhat experienced, but um, from what I hear from people that have like new, new managers, it sometimes is like tough, but like every manager has been a new, new manager at some point. So uh, that is not a knock to like new, new managers, but um, definitely like knowing like you want to get that experience and you want to make sure like, that ego doesn't get in the way if that's the case. And, you know, like they're willing to learn from somebody that has experience and so on. Anyway, my own experience is, um, yeah, trial periods. Do not sign hella quick. <laughs> like figure out what they on. Like uh, uh, I had a manager lose me a huge deal. I think we had that on a previous interview <laughs> when I was talking about the um, my song with Chipotle, Guacamole. And uh, I had a manager hop on even though I initiated that deal and uh, he just messed that up. And I've had a, recently, even last year, I had a different manager hop on in the middle of a deal and out negotiate it. Cause he was trying to get way too much and be hungry and all that. And he has experience. His whole thing was like, I used to manage this. And I was just like all this ego, <laughs> just like, they're not really understanding where I'm at in my position and the money I need. <laughs> <laughs> like, like i already got like a good amount agreed on and they pulled back that budget to zero because you wanted to <laughs> five exit on like, so i guess just like yeah like you need to make sure a manager understands you um they're riding in the corner they have experience doing some stuff and if not they're willing to learn and uh yeah like like there needs to be a trust system because like even like some of my best managers even in acting like some of the top ones don't do contracts because it's really like off trust. Like, you know, like, and not to say like, don't ever sign a contract. Like we'll worry about contracts later. Like, maybe when you're signing with like a record deal, it's like the money gets bigger, but it's like, if, if you don't trust them and they don't trust you, it's like, you want to build that relationship first. So um, that's very important. So if someone's trying to get you a sign in the first like two weeks, like watch out for that. I would say that. <laughs> so much, uh, so much of, a legitimate relationship. I feel like as in a in the business, the management relationship most closely reflects like a personal relationship with your significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, or whatever. Because again, if the trust isn't there, it's not gonna work regardless. Right? And, you know, um, it's gonna end badly one way or another. And then also 
trial periods are nice. Date a little bit, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, and I've just seen so many times that uh, where managers will mess stuff up for people. And the biggest part that we don't talk about, and I want to make sure you feel seen, Jo, because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think enough people talk about this. That are, people are in your position. We talk about. Oh, he's a wealthy man and all these gold diggers are coming for him or even whatever whatever that might look like if you flip it to the to woman's side. What I've noticed, you know, I'm cool with quite a few influencers, you know what I mean? And I've noticed that y'all have management situations that are a little gold digger sometimes. All right? Yeah. The, the y'all are more prone to oh, this person has all these views as an influencer. And you look like a bag to me. All I got to do is sign you. You're my leverage. And I can flip and get a few deals and get some money up off of other people. All right. They're coming to you with a gold digging mindset. Mm -hmm. And then they fuck you over as a result. Yeah. Yeah, that's happened. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's happened. Even the management I had before, that was like, I was like, I remember they try to, they try to sign up like my content side. And I was like. First off, I looked at the roster and was like, I'm like your second biggest content creator. And the other girl blew up because of music. Like, no, I'm not going to sign the content side. We could just do music. And if y'all truly believe that you can like improve my music career, you'll earn off music. But like you trying to get my content side that I've already built on top of that, like a 360 is is ridiculous. Like you guys haven't done anything for this aspect and we could do non-exclusive here. Whatever you bring in, you could take a percentage of it. But like, you don't need to be taking percentage of what I'm already doing. Like, that's just crazy. So, yeah, definitely have been in that gold digger situation and seeing people, like, leverage, like, you know, now their full roster looks better because I'm on there, you know? So That's the whole point, yep. And, you know, be wary of, like, what their intentions are. And, and I guess that just boils back down to, like, the trust and so on. Like, I think it is, like, you want to find that sweet spot where, I mean, I don't want to say, like, you don't want to be the smallest or you don't want to be the biggest. Like, I mean, I... I tend to like being one of the smaller artists on someone's roster, but uh, uh, just because that's room for growth and that means that they have experience at the top. But um, yeah, I mean, teach their own. <laughs> it's funny when you talk about the um, manager effing you over by like over negotiating too hard. Shout out to my uncle, man. The, the, the one that I have multiple, but he, he knows who he is. I remember... <laughs> I remember, and I can only be so mad at him because I was in this position because of him in the first place. He flew me, my sister, and my brother out to uh, Puerto Rico when I was probably like a senior right after college or something. It was pretty, uh, you know, I was young. And I ran into this guy who was shooting travel channel content. And he did the jet skis. I'd never been out of the country, let alone like by water like that and let alone a jet ski. And he was willing to do this really low deal because really he just needed the content, right? Cause he for the for the travel channel. So he he wasn't trying to tax like that. It was like $45 for me, my brother, and my sister. So I'm like, oh I'll bet. Now $45 ain't a lot of money. However, I told you my age and where I was at the time, I didn't have $45. Right? <laughs> you know, none of us had $45. <laughs> so we asked my uncle and like this man is a hardcore negotiator that's what he does like for he's made a living off of just negotiating you know what I mean and he was just like what $45 he get on the phone he was like no nah, man y'all should be able to do this for free he needs you because he, <laughs> I was like he needs me he got gets on the phone he's like oh you're not gonna do it for free he's like alright we don't need you then click and I just remember the feeling of the click <laughs> Like, oh. <laughs> damn, we not getting on those jet skis. <laughs> we, not, we not getting on those jet skis, bro. That shit hurt so bad, man. But I did. I also yeah. couldn't say nothing. Like that's my uncle. And again, we this is the reason we're here. But like, the, just the air left my chest for a period. That it, it really hurt. And I can only imagine in some ways, right? <laughs> like the Chipotle deal, right? Everything's rolling, and then bam, click. <laughs> You literally, yeah, you can't negotiate hard unless you're willing to walk away, which is one thing. And sometimes managers don't understand that you're not willing to walk away. Like, you need the money. You're good. I'm not good, bro. <laughs> They're willing to walk away. Dude, you done lived a full life, been to like 20 countries. I got rent to pay. <laughs> yes. I, need, I need this deal. 
Bro, I'll be candid with the numbers too, because like this was this was ridiculous. This last one that happened in 2023. Um, mm -hmm. like I already um they hit me up because Guacamole blew up again, which by the way, I always say it. That song is like my move by Doja Cat. Don't take me seriously. If you're gonna listen to that song, listen to my other tracks too. Like yeah. it is my <laughs> goofy track that uh like it's just brandy and all that stuff. But yeah, anyway, that song took off and like a few brands hit me up like to see the song, but this other brand that I won't name hit me up. They wanted me to make their own song, like not even guacamole. They just liked the song, wanted me to make them their own song. We negotiated, got agreed on 30K. Great number. Like, you know, like, mind you, yes, it can be more. And I understand that, but it's also a great deal. I need that money. So I'm like, cool. Like, like, this is, this is like healthy. It's good. Like, it's like, yes, there's things that are 100K, six figures and more. Like, I understand that. But we agreed on it. We were working on the song for like months because like revisions, revisions, like all this stuff. I had it done in like the first two weeks, but like revisions on lyrics and then another revision and so on. So we got it done. And then when the new year hit, we were about to like, you know, officially like send over the final version. This new manager that I just met was like, oh, I worked at Sony for 10 years and da -da 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 -da, and all this experience, like name, name dropped a bunch of freaking artists that he's worked with all this. He's like, I already know you should be getting like six figures on this. I was like, I know, but I need this money. He's like, oh, well, let me try and get you more. This man hops on the email chain, right? And I invite him on the email chain. He was sent the most aggressive paragraph I had ever seen, not even proofread by me. And I was like, yo, what the? <laughs> the most aggressive email of like, this is how much we're like, this is why we need this much money. And we're not taking 30, pretty much. <laughs> And that co and that company was like, yo, like what? Because they never bought a song. The fact that they were doing thirty was a big investment for them. So the, like, yes, they they don't understand that. Like, yes, my manager was kind of right in a way. Like he was like the things he was saying. Like, if you guys want to use this for radio and this and this and perpetuity, like six figure deal. But like, in reality, it's like I need that money. And their counter was, oh, there's fireworks again. <laughs> their counter was, hey, we're just gonna back out entirely. Mind you, I already invested. I bought the song from the producer, all this stuff. Mm. I was out of pocket. I was like, ain't no way this is going to go down like this. And the manager was just like aggressive. I literally removed him from the chain. I apologized. Like, hey, sorry, I just brought him in. They thought I was fake. They thought I was trying to like email like a, through a side email and I was trying to be aggressive too. So I was like, no, like I need to like talk to them. I like, you know, sent an audio message on IG the original way they hit me up. Oh, like, look, honestly, like, this is what happened. Da, 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 da. I got the deal back at half. But that all to say, the manager like, messed me up. <laughs> and it's like, I didn't even need to bring him in. It was already a signed deal for 30K that I ended up getting half for. This is, bro, this is a real conversation. I'm glad you, you come, in, come in here with it, man. How many times have we seen managers come into situations that existed before them and they just feel like they got to show their worth, man. And they start kicking shit around. It's like, dog. Like, here ain't the place, you man. You think I learned my lesson? Because the same thing happened with Chipotle. Like, that is on you, bro. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but like, for real, like, I see that time and time again. It's like they're there and they feel like they have to show their worth and they're moving on something where it's like, no, you bring me new stuff. These situations, because I already established a relationship here, you're going to mess up a relationship I already have. Right? Like That's not even a smart manager to come in and immediately just make these massive changes on stuff that yeah. you weren't a part of, man. And I I, I, yeah. I hate that for you. Like you said, you learned your lesson, though. So I, go, yeah. I mean, it's a, it <laughs> happened twice. So if it happens again, fuck the peace sign. <laughs> 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 oh man no i mean it's, it's really crazy though we've we've seen that and then sometimes it works on people's favor if there's enough coming in where you know we first start getting hit with it like super hard early tiktok bro be like 300 dollars, and then two days later oh i just got new management two thousand dollars it's like yo but we've been like building for like a minute now how are you going to, like, at least let us finish this post that we agreed on or do yeah. one more post or something, like, half our way up to a little. But, no, nah, like, they'll, they'll be managers, like, this is the hard line. And they, I mean, look, maybe it works for them in enough of their situations where net, yeah. they're good, but. If they're willing to walk away from it. You're a casualty, though. Them. Yeah, you, but you become a casualty of what they're willing to walk away from. Yep. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Yeah. You can only, you can only negotiate hard if you're willing to walk away and people think like they can negotiate hard and force people to pay the money. And it's like, no, that's not the case. Like in the reality, it's like, especially if their numbers have already been put out, like you can't negotiate that hard. And mind you, like that was a, we were building that relationship. That was just the music side. We were already negotiating more money for the content side. Now it's like, I got half of the original offer and we're not doing anything else. So like, <laughs> it was just like, you could have played the long game, played the like the relationship well and like really like, you know, made them feel happy about the song. And like now it's like they feel like they just did it because of my cost. Cause I, I came back and said, Hey, I spent this much money. I had to show invoices of how much I've already spent. And they were like, they didn't want to be assholes, so they just <laughs> It's not a legit relationship because they don't feel safe. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like to to use like not even in a, like a, a fluffy you know, social media term, like they legit don't feel like, can I trust this situation? What is he going to do? Is somebody like, oh, well, yeah, like J.O. seems to still be cool, but the manager's still the manager. Are they going to come back out the fence and start barking at me right. again? And right. now you got me thinking about stuff. And here's the thing, especially under like dealing with people outside of the music industry, like, you know, the man managers or just a lot of people like to come from this or even lawyers like to come from a perspective of, oh man, they're trying to screw you over. And a lot of times, like like you said, this might be their first foray. They don't even know half of this stuff. So now you got me thinking about all kind of risks that I didn't know I was getting involved in. Do I even want to be involved with this artist? I didn't know that was a thing. Like that's this, this is a way deeper relationship. Like, bro, I thought this was date number two. You talking about getting married right now. This is crazy. Like, is. I don't think people understand that, man. Like you have to be aware. And that's really the sign of like, you know, just great business and nuance. You have to be able to read people in the situation. Like you are not the same in every single market. Like, yes, mm -hmm. you can go to this business and get a hundred K. You can go to music and they're going to give you nothing and still try to own all of you. You can go to another company <laughs> right, and they might have five K. Right. And that's yeah. just your worth in that particular market. And your worth does yeah. not apply the same over every market, even like major companies. When I'm in selling in Africa versus Brazil versus America and which city in America, like you might have to tax a little bit differently given the, yeah. the circumstance. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely like doing your research, too. It's like you can look up most companies, especially in America, like their gross income and looking at like, you know, one to two percent of that's probably their marketing spend being like, all right, that's their spend for the year. Like, what are they going to be willing to pay you for a song or for this campaign, you know, and use that to kind of gauge like where you want to put your rates at, especially if they're not willing to give you a budget first. Um, but yeah, that's what we kind of did with these companies when we came up with those numbers and like they did say yes to that 30 real quick <laughs> like i'm be honest like they said yes to that 30 real fast and we're like damn okay like because th this was a number that we're like hey based on like this how much you guys make like this how much songs would cost like anywhere from the 50 to 100k range if you're doing commercial stuff and all that like let's just so sometimes it works out when you like get that right number for them that also works for you so yeah <laughs> it's crazy two percent of their how their profit is that what you said how yeah you it's kind of like uh it was actually jc i was mentioning him before the thing jc one of my managers um he kind of like he knows that because he used to work with like a bunch of people on nda but he used to work with like a bunch of major major uh brands and stuff that we know and uh he was saying like um being able to like look at for instance, I won't use that brand. Let me use a brand that I don't work with. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's say Walmart. Let's say Walmart profits, and we'll just make up a number, $10 billion a year. And that means like around 2% is probably their marketing spend, at least, if not more. Um, that would be, what, $200 million, right? Am I that accurate? Something like that. So like that's their spend per year. And if this is a huge campaign, like, yeah, maybe you can get away with a hundred six figures very easily, probably, if it makes sense. Like, you know, like, like, cause that, that budget's being spread out and it's a write off for them. So, um, it really just depends what the, the campaign is and how important that campaign is. If you're one of like 60 artists on it, like, okay, that number might have to go down. Cause maybe they're just doing a hundred K for like this month or like you could divide that by the months and see like, what are they averaging per month? and so on and yeah you can kind of get it because that's also like their ads you got to think about like their tv ads and all that stuff it's not just content marketing at one or two percent 
So you got to really put all that into factor and be like, okay, what is the actual budget here? But companies like Walmart are probably coming to you with a budget already. <laughs> so they're not asking you to be like, hey, what's your rate? <laughs> um, but depends, really. That's funny dealing with those companies because, yeah, the budget is the budget. Straightforward, but the numbers usually going to be nice and big. So you're like, oh, well, yeah. I'm happy. Or they're pulling back because they spend a lot on TV. Like, honestly, the companies that pay the most have always been the midsize for me. Mm. Yeah, little hack. But, <laughs> like, I guess maybe because they're, they're focused more on the content than TV. Or I don't know why, but it's just, like, the midsize companies have a lot of money and they're still trying to, like, well, you, get themselves. You're the money. advantage, man. That's what it is. Like I can't beat I can't beat the companies bigger than me on those bigger like more competitive shelf spaces. I have to find the alternative route. Like the social is the alternative route to the TV and primary spaces that WalMarts are killing. You know exactly. Yeah. One more thing about management. Like you said, trial period. I want to speak. If you could speak a little bit more about the the um. There's so trial period like a test period and then also. Exclusive and non-exclusive. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's hard to be non-exclusive on the music side. I will say that. So, like, I like to separate that also from my content. But I just separate different aspects of me. I'm an actor, musician, um, you know, uh, main two, and then content creator. So it's like, I like to have all three of those <laughs> separate. And, yeah, I could talk to someone that special. I, my two manager go, or one manager go, they, they did content and music at the same time. That's what they wanted to do. But like that also ended up still we were done at the trial period but uh yeah you definitely want to like maybe at least three months where you see what they can do for you honestly it's like kind of like recruiting for uh college basketball like these scouts are gonna you know <laughs> get you <laughs> get you some nice thing get you some nice gear uh you know they might throw some money under the table no just, <laughs> that's illegal but they're not doing managers aren't gonna pay you but <laughs> like you know they might like smooth and see what they show you what they can do early on and that's very important to know like are they what are they capable of because if they can't even do that in the smooth period like what are they gonna do after that so <laughs> that's also very important you know like i got like in my smooth period i got like a bunch of free clothes from fashion nova uh and like uh some stuff from like puma and like all this stuff getting you know sent to me and i was like oh, cool like this is this seems like a comfortable era <laughs> you know so and not like that's going to be common for everybody's experience like if if they're like you know uh organizing your life or showing you like that they're actually better and advancing you then that's something to consider also like you know in that smooth period or whatever um so yeah i don't know if i like the smooth period man <laughs> i mean the way you're you, you want to go cold turkey in it no nah, i'm just thinking about it should almost be ignored i feel like for artists and i and because i because i know enough of the game to know how it's all lies just like mm -hmm. you could just like you could rent a car you know what I mean? Like you go out of town, you in the, you're at the beach, and you you and your boys rent a car. You got your best outfit on that you would never have on back home, right? It could be a complete lie, and you could be considering them versus a manager that is like, "Hey, man, like this is what it is. This is how I am," and they're not giving you any fluff, but everything there is substance. But their intentions are more in line as well. Like when I move, I move. It's not any fluff to distract you. You know what I'm saying? Well, same thing with the colleges. Like, you know, like, yeah, you're getting schmooze and you get this free stuff. But let's say, like, you know, you're talking to Virginia State and they seem real while USC's over here fluffing and puffing and it seems fake. Like, yeah, you're going to have to suss out the situation. I say, like, definitely explore options is the important part. So that way you can find that one school or manager that is, like, the one, you know, that makes sense and isn't, like, bullshitting because like sometimes the smooth is cool and it's like it is like real like it's not like just fake and like them doing this is this is like they have a roster and they've shown like they've right. done this in the past i'll say it's the difference between schmooze and like nah this is just the world that you'll be entering and i'm so much on that level exactly. right yeah. and 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 now you're seeing the what that would look like right but you have to be able to like you said suss out like what's yeah. real and what's not or did i just gather all my resources for the for the day you know what I'm saying, <laughs> and yeah. and 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 pull them out. Yeah, I get, look, at the end of the day, I, I'm just trying to say, man, ain't nothing wrong with Cheesecake Factory, bro. <laughs> I love Cheesecake Factory. That's my spot. 
<laughs> you know, one of my favorite drinks ever is actually at Cheesecake Factory. Uh, it's the Whiskey Smash. A whiskey Smash? Yeah, they don't make they make a whiskey smash everywhere, but the one at Cheesecake Factory tastes like candy. Like it will get you drunk and you can't even tell there's alcohol in it. It is my favorite drink. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's a that sound wild, bro. A whiskey. Take, <laughs> what you think? Don't take me to Cheesecake Factory. Don't take you to Cheesecake Factory. Don't take me to Cheesecake Factory. Hey man. I'm on the side of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you supposed to do the taking, bro. No, oh, man. No. Oh, Jacory's the prize. Yeah, bro. We, we got to leave the diva alone. Bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> you don't like it? Well, what's your spot? <laughs> like, for on that same level? Or just in general? I don't think I got a spot. I ain't gonna lie. I just kind of wing it. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Like, every every new date is a new experience. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 got to keep his attention, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. Gotta, you know what I'm saying? Keep me keep me on my toes. That's what I, that's what I do. <laughs> Oh man! And look, and that's how we know it's time to get up out of here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, J J O, appreciate you being on the pod, man. I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey, and we out. Peace. <laughs>